wool felt versus cotton felt. What's the difference in the materials from the perspective of a hat maker? Let's start with talking about wool felt, which is probably the most common, best known felt hat making material. Most of you are familiar with wool in hat body form, which is an unblocked hood, flare, or cartwheel brimmed shape that hasn't got any uh, specific shape to it beyond the dome into which your head can fit. And you block it on a hat block in order to impart shapes such as with this fedora, this Homburg. It's a fairly strong felt. This is a piece of wool felt. It's a wool fur felt blend actually, probably rabbit fur. And if I uh, try to jam my thumb through it, I can't. There's an area where it's a bit perforated that I think I could uh, get it to rip a hole there, but that's only because it was already weakened there from being stitched. You can use lots of different options for stiffener with a wool felt. This one has been stiffened with hairspray, which is a kind of trendy stiffening agent that I see lots of milliners talking about in a contemporary context. Wool is basically animal hair. Hairspray is meant to stabilize human hair. So it follows that it works pretty good as a stiffening agent. You can also use a thinned gelatin sizing for a non-toxic alternative, thin it with water, and the traditional solvent-based shellac sizing that is dangerous if you breathe the fumes, but it imparts the most stability to wool felt, which is what this hat was sized with. Very rigid stiffening. Wool felt is relatively thin. This sample here is quite thin, less than an eighth of an inch probably. And this hat is more like a fat eighth. You don't really get much above 3 sixteenths in wool felt thickness. It comes in a range of different colors. I have examples of navy and pink and maroon. Wool is also quite dyeable. I have some samples here of dyed wool felt. I have a brown, darker brown. So if you know how to dye protein fibers, wool felt and related fur felt blends dye quite well. The cost of a wool felt hat body starts around $15 or $20. It can go up to as much as $100 or more. Flat wool felt begins at $14 a yard. Now let's talk about cotton felt. Cotton felt is also sometimes known as industrial felt. And now you find it most frequently used as a packing material or an insulation material. This is a piece that came in a package I received recently that has a sort of a heather gray quality to it. That's true of all the contemporary cotton felts that I've seen that they have uh, a variegation to them. It's not the uniformity that you can find in wool felt colors. They are also much thicker than wool felts. So this one is about 3 eighths of an inch thick. I've even come across it quite thick. This is almost an inch thick. It's really more like 7 eighths, I guess. All of these cotton felts that you find in industrial applications are made from recycled garments. This piece is blue because it's primarily made from recycled blue jeans. I've done burn tests on all of these and these two thinner versions are 100% cotton. With this thicker one, it did behave when I put it in the flame as if small components of it were synthetic. So I think this one is probably composed of recycled cotton poly blend fabrics. Cotton felt is weaker than wool felt 
because the fibers are plant fibers and they don't want to mat up with each other the way that hair tends to. You know, your hair can get tangled. Cotton fibers don't really knot up the way that protein fibers do. So I can, I can rip a hole quite easily in this cotton felt piece. Cotton felt is only minimally blockable. If you try to pull it over too extreme of a form, it, as you can see, will just tear. And you need to rely upon darts and stay stitching in order to impart the stability and shape to the hat that you want. So with this hat here, you can see that it has curvature in the crown. And in fact, there's some blocked curvature here at the top of the crown. As we consider the shape of the curve, there's three darts in this hat that has then been stabilized with rows of top stitching that becomes an aesthetic component of the look of the hat, but it also has a structural function as well. For this hat, I experimented with the hairspray sizing and I was not satisfied with how it turned out. If you need to stabilize it with a stiffener, your best bet is to go with a solvent-based shellac sizing that you should be applying either outdoors or in a, a ventilation room. Determine. These industrial felts only come in this indigo blue and variations of gray. Theoretically, cotton felt is dyeable, but the conditions under which you need to dye cotton fabrics would cause the weak structure of cotton felt to break down. I'm not saying you couldn't dye it, but you would also need to refelt it because it will come apart. Because it's used as a packing material, cotton felt can be free, but if you need to purchase a quantity, it's sold by the thickness and the dimension. Well, this is a versus video, but I'm not really advocating for one being superior to the other. From a millinery standpoint, it's just important to know the properties of each one so you know the limitations of what you can do when working with them. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell for notification of new content. Please join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern for Open Studio Stream.